So good afternoon. This is the afternoon meeting of the House Appropriations Committee on March 16th, and we are delighted to welcome the chair of the House Health Care Committee to um, give us a, an overview of H210, the health equity bill. Um, and as you know, Chair Lippert, our, you know, if you could give us a broad overview of what the bill is trying to accomplish and then bring us quickly to the uh, appropriations request. Um, in that would be terrific. So okay. thank you. And I will turn this over to you um, for your presentation. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, I will do my best to be brief, really. Uh, having reviewed some of this previously with your committee, uh, but H210 is, uh, let, me, let me start by saying uh, H210 comes to you from the House Health Care Committee, and it is a, a substantial piece of work that we are moving forward to address what we, and I think we all have come to understand, are the significant health disparities, uh, which have been now more, have been revealed in more vivid way and a more shocking way and distressing way. Uh, as a result of COVID. Uh, I think many of us understood that there were health disparities based on race. Uh, but when we look at the data about how, who is being disproportionately impacted by COVID-19, it is clear that the disproportionality is centered on issues of race, issues of disability, uh, and some other marginalized communities. The H210 at its core uh, came to the House Healthcare Committee, having been crafted by members of the impacted communities, particularly from the uh, Vermont Racial Justice Alliance, uh, who put together this bill. Uh, and we have modified it in consultation and in consultation with the originators of the bill uh, and with, uh, after taking extensive testimony from the affected communities. The three primary affected communities that this bill intends to address around health disparities and working toward health equity are community Vermonters who are members of the communities uh, affected by race, who, who are, uh, well, some refer to the BIPOC, Black, Indigenous, People of Color, uh, the LGBTQ communities, uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer and questioning communities, and the communities of disability. And of course, there are cross uh, there inter there's intersections between these communities as well. But what, what you have in front of you is probably the longest set of findings you're going to find uh, in any bill for many of years, and I'm not going to try to go through the findings, but the findings really are all based in data, uh, because we know from many people, we hear stories and anecdotes of health disparities, but, we've, but the originators of the bill, as well as our committee, uh, felt it was very important to actually uh, anchor, anchor the uh, findings in, in uh, studies and uh, surveys, in fact. So every finding has a reference to the source documentation. Originally, the bill intended to establish an Office of Health Equity in the Department of Health. But because the Department of Health is 24 seven dealing with COVID, we realize that this is not uh, and their, their testimony, of course, said, you know, they're, they're rightly uh, addressing COVID 24 seven. They also testified, however, that the bill is completely consistent with the findings of the Department of Health around health equity issues. They have done work that is cited again in our findings uh, where they identify the same three communities around race and, race and ethnicity, LGBTQ issues, and disabilities as three of the primary areas where health disparities stand out the most. In order to move forward without burdening the Department of Health at a time when they need to be continued focusing on COVID and simultaneously trying to, what we're trying to empower the impacted communities, we are moving forward with trying to stand up what is the commission on the Health Equity Advisory Commission, which is a large commission, uh, not your traditional commission. It's made up of 27 members of the impacted communities and representatives of state government. 
And we are turning to them under the leadership of uh, the Director of Racial Equity, the Office of Racial Equity. The Director of Racial Equity has agreed to take the lead in standing up this Health Equity Advisory Commission and to work with them to help determine the path forward for establishing the Office of Health Equity. We actually believe this is an important additional change to the, to the proposal because it empowers the impacted communities to have a greater voice in determining where, how, and whether this uh, office should be independent or located within state government, perhaps still, and likely, I hope, personally, within the Department of Health. But this, this bill, again, works with the Director of Racial Equity to give her office additional resources, transitional temporary resources to stand up this commission, which then will be, will, with those resources, the commission will then consult on the structure and placing of the Office of Health Equity. And will also uh, be able to receive grants, significantly be able to receive grants because we believe there's access to federal monies as well that will be important in moving forward with the Office of Health Equity. Again, I think it's, it's, it's significant that this commission is made up of the impacted communities. This commission is also charged in its duties and powers with advising both uh, all areas of state government as well as the General Assembly on efforts to improve to improve the status of these impacts, eliminate health disparities over time. We also direct the, the commission to advise rather than to direct, we're, rather than us saying what, what kind of cultural competencies should be put forward for health providers in the state of Vermont, we again are going to turn to this commission and have the commission have input in how and to what degree additional cultural competencies should be. I'm sorry, uh, that's something I can't do. I'm sorry, do you all hear what I'm hearing? <laughs> it sounds like you activated Siri by mistake. I did with no intention and suddenly I was getting assistance I wasn't looking for. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> These times that we're in are beyond me. <laughs> uh, that's exactly what happened. So I think what I was saying is that we're going to turn to the commission to also advise on the, the types and levels of cultural competency that healthcare providers in Vermont should be required to have uh, and with what frequency. The original bill had a specific uh, two hours of continuing education focused specifically on MDs, we realize that it needs to be broader than medical physicians. And then lastly, but not insignificantly, is that we are also asking for data collection to be revised. And you previously as the Health Appropriations Committee have previously helped appropriate some funds around issues of uh, health disparities in terms of collecting appropriate data across all healthcare entities in the state of Vermont. We're looking to the Green Mountain Care Board, the Department of Health, and the Office of Racial Equity to participate in helping to review and designing and proposing standardized collection of data across all parts of healthcare in the state of Vermont. Without the appropriate data, we can't tell for certain in some areas whether there's uh, health disparities or not. Uh, that some of this data needs to be disaggregated. In some parts of state government, it needs to be collected because it's not being collected at all. So that there's, there's work to be done there as well. I think I've covered the key points of the bill, uh, but again, to reiterate, the key issue is that we, we are looking to this commission to be assisted or to be uh, stood up under the direction of the Office of racial equity, and that uh, we're going to appropriate $180,000, we're recommending appropriating $180,000 to this office for the engagement of some temporary uh, 
assistance in the form of either a consultant or, or, or consultants uh, to provide per diem and expenses to this commission and to, uh, and you previously have appropriated some money around the issues of data. So with that, I, I guess I would like to reiterate that this is the creation, this is, this is in some ways the equivalent of creating some infrastructure around health disparities uh, that I think you have a proposal in front of you to help create some infrastructure around uh, from commerce and businesses of uh, uh, BIPOC community in Vermont, where there needs to be some additional, or the commerce com committee is at least recommending that there needs to be some additional infrastructure created to help address the issues in that realm. And this is, I think, the next step in doing this around health, eliminating health disparities. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Leppard. Uh, Representative, uh, so we have a few questions if you sure. don't mind. Uh, Representative Harrison. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and thank you, Chair Leppard, for uh, bringing this forward. Um, I guess I have a couple questions. Um, first of all, um, I don't know if I ever remember seeing a commission set up where you ran out of alphabet letters and you had to go into a second round. I think there's like 27 members. Um, there are 27 members. One, how many? There are 27. You counted right. 27. Okay. Um, so um, I, I guess I, I worry about, is it too large and how did well, you? Well, can I speak to that? The, the, this, sure. commission, this commission is set up specifically to have uh, representation from each of the affected communities, the Issue, communities around issues of race and ethnicity, communities around the LGBTQ persons and, and the disabilities community. And the anticipation is that this, com this commission, while it may meet in its entirety, would also work in subgroups. Uh, so that this, this is not just a matter of a group of 27 people trying to do work that uh, might in fact be challenging in its entire with the entirety of the group but we anticipate and under the leadership of the director of racial equity it's been suggested that one of the ways to move forward with some of the work of this commission would be in subgroup work groups okay so when they met in subgroups would they also be entitled to yes. dms yes and yes. of the 180,000 uh, appropriation the bill asked for um, there's some language in here su suggesting that the per diems are out of the 180. Do we know what the breakdown is? Because you also mentioned that you might be to bring this, start this up, uh, need to hire some consultants and whatnot. Right. So of the $180,000, we anticipate, and this is, an, uh, this is an estimate at this point, we anticipate that the per diem and expenses could range from $12,000 to $20,000. Uh, depending on the frequency uh, with and this the nature or the, um, the full group subgroups etc. Uh, yeah, I, I want to speak to that for a moment because in, in fact it's it's not tradition it's not traditionally done this way. It's traditionally done saying the legislature says you shall meet X number of meetings, mm -hmm. and when those meetings are done, you're done. We in fact are turning it's, this on its head deliberately and saying the group that we are proposing to put together here is empowered to determine how often they meet, the frequency with, inch, with, with which they meet initially in order to establish themselves and be able to move forward. The Director of Racial Equity met with our, we heard testimony on a number of occasions. And one of the things she brought forward to us was in her experience, and some of you have perhaps have heard her or had her report on her own Office of Racial Equity. That in fact, what was important initially was not just that they had X number of meetings, but she used a phrase which made a big impact on me, and that is process equity. Ah. That when you empower a group of people to come together, when you empower a group of people to come together, particularly from impacted communities, we also need to turn to them to allow their knowledge and their lived experience to inform the process not just the content. And that she felt and she learned in the process in the, in the order of creating the um, Office of Racial Equity and working with her advisory group, that pro what's called process equity was equally important. And you need to, we need to empower those impacted 
to have a voice, not just the legislature of those of us, frankly, which are most of us, some of us are from those impacted communities, but frankly, the vast majority of us are not. Yeah, so I, I mean, I appreciate that, that, that structure the is limit. Deliberate. Yeah, no, I, I and I appreciate that because how are we to know how many meetings are actually needed uh, and the conversations that need to happen? But uh, we do it because we don't, you know, we don't have the ability to, you know, put a blank check if they decide to meet right. every week. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, on the um, commission here, um, yesterday um, we were looking at an education bill that set up a new group, and um, we we put a sunset in there after three years to review it, not necessarily to expire it, but to review it um, and and have the legislature, um, you know, force it to look at it. Is this still necessary? Uh, do we need to do that? I'm wondering if you thought about that in the context of this bill. Well, we did. To be honest, we didn't give it lengthy consideration uh, because, in fact, I think we, we have come to a realization that issues of health disparities have been decades, in fact, more than decades, one might say uh, many, many, many decades in the making. The thought that we could sunset and not need something to address these issues in a period of two years, three years, just doesn't seem, doesn't seem to, on its face, make sense. What might make sense is to be able to review whether this particular structure has the efficacy that we're hoping it will have. Um, I, I guess I would entertain that, but uh, part of my hesitation, I'll be honest and say part of my hesitation is the message that it would send. I think we're at a point in a moment in time when I'm not wanting to send a message to uh, impacted communities that, well, we, we think it's important, but only two years worth important or three years important. So I think we need to be thoughtful. Uh, let's think about that. But I, I would I would want to be careful about how we, what we inadvertently message about this, uh, what I think is a tremendously important issue. Well, I appreciate that, but I think also sunsets are a good idea to force you to look at it. it do we have I, the right makeup of people? I uh, is it best done through a commission or some other way? Uh, that I don't think that minimizes the issue that you're you're bringing to the table here. Thank you. So we have a, a, some other questions, Dave. Sure. Yeah, I, I know you wanna move fast, so I'll try to be quick, uh, Madam Chair. Um, could you just elaborate, uh, Chair Lippert, a little bit more uh, on the remaining 160,000? It's for a consultant exclusively, anything else? Well, it's, to, it, I, it's it has, I'll tell you how, how I backed into it, to be honest, and thinking about mm -hmm. it. Uh, first, I'll tell you what we're not asking for. We're not asking for you to allocate a position. But a position, if it, a position would come with the cost of a salary and benefits, et cetera. Uh, and so we uh, initially were thinking, uh, what, what, would, what, would a, what would a reasonable range of salary and benefits to be equivalent to that? And so we thought in terms of that, as well as some additional funds uh, in the order of, I think I was, when I came in previously, I reviewed this, but it was like uh, $140,000 uh, to be the equivalent of uh, salary and benefits, uh, $20,000, and this is roughly allocated, $20,000 for additional uh, bringing in expert witnesses, or um, that's a legal term, I'm going back to judiciary, I'm afraid, uh, but to bring in uh, consultants with expertise uh, to work, to consult with the commission and uh, 12 to $20,000 for the uh, per diem and expenses. So we, and that's a, we anticipate that they could, that the director of social ec racial equity would contract with either a firm or an individual or maybe individuals for this, what is really a transitional process of, of working with and standing up the commission and the initial work of determining whether and how an Office of Health Equity should be cited, uh, the nature of continuing education, and uh, to be part of the data process. So I think you addressed this the other day, but I can't recall exactly. Uh, does this lend itself to a one-time 
appropriation. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I meant to mention that because I think it actually absolutely lends itself to the use of, because it's transitional, it's short term. And because the, I think the, the findings make it very clear. And I think lots of work beyond the findings, the impact of COVID has revealed that the health disparities are profound in Vermont as well as across the nation. But, but we're, we're not an exception to that. And so, yes, thank you. I, I had that in my notes, but I failed to mention it, that this, I think, uh, lends itself uh, quite legitimately uh, to the use of one-time uh, funds related to the COVID pandemic. So is it fair to say, this is just my layperson summary, this is a transitional investment or resources, if you will, to stand up a commission, a commission that will help frame this work for the future, perhaps identify some metrics by which uh, success or failure might be measured, et cetera. Is that? And to recommend accurate? and to recommend whether and how to have uh, ongoing infrastructure to address these over time. And to, to, do, to do this under the leadership, again, the transitional leadership of the director of racial equity from the state of Vermont, who has expressed a willingness to take this on with the additional resources made available. But I want to be very clear as well. If, if, we're not if, we're not, if we're not able or willing to make additional resources available to the director of racial equity, uh, we should not then give her office this additional responsibility. And, and I think this is, I, I haven't said this today, but I did previously. Fr from our point of view, our committee's point of view, this is contingent on the legislature and the governor's office uh, filling, the, uh, filling the proposal to add two additional staff on an ongoing basis with positions and funding. Um, thank you, Chair Lippert. I'm looking to the committee to see if there are any other questions um, and I'm not seeing any. I, so I'm looking at section six on the appropriation. So to the area of our jurisdiction um, I hear and personally and agree with, it's neither here nor there, but I, I understood your uh, suggestion that this is a different, that, that we should be seeing the establishment of this organization, um, this effort in a different way than the traditional um, way we think about counts uh, about councils or committees of the you know we're going to do five meetings a year and it's going to be organized to look like this and yes. instead you are turning to the the group of folks that you believe are best able to address the issues that that you're asking them to look at and to suggest to us how to organize this work and in the first year of that effort you're proposing that we spend $180,000. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. You could do millions if you yeah. wish. Yeah, that's, that's the way we're behaving today. Um, <laughs> $180,000 on, on what you've described. Right. And I, I, I understand that in this section, it, it goes on to say it's your it's the intent that we make similar appropriations until an office is established. I have to say that's something that gets us extremely uncomfortable, um, and we won't even talk about binding future legislation, oh, which we know we cannot do. Yeah, um, so I can imagine. Um, amending that to say, to asking this group to propose um, if they believe necessary uh, future of uh, uh, a, a budget for the work as it continues. So we would make an appropriation for this year, um, entertain the notion that, well, well one day we have to live within the $180,000 box that is created if we all agree to that. Um, that is what is appropriated, not an additional amount because they have more meetings or whatever. That's what they have. No, it would work within that. Yeah. And then that they would bring, rather than saying it's our intent, but we would say, bring us back 
back a budget proposal for the following year if necessary. Yeah. So to try to corral that a little bit better. I, I that, can't, yeah. Okay. That, that that seems consistent with what our hope is. Okay. And that and and then that would have to be looked at on a year to year basis to, you know, as as we do with everything else we we do. Yeah. So I, I, I just I think the yeah, I, I think that that that's consistent with um, the view of our committee, I'd say. Okay. Okay, they and I'm looking to the committee, uh, Marty. Yeah, I'm wondering about reporting back on their activities and, and that sort of thing. And I, I did see one about continuing education. And now I see something on page 19 about uh, reporting back before January 15th to the various committees uh, regarding any recommendations for legislative action. It doesn't say January 15th when, or, but maybe that's in some previous stuff that I wasn't able to scan. In terms of, I, I, it I'm says an, on an, annually on January 15th, I believe. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're looking for on page 19, line okay, 10? Yes, okay. Annually. So this would be, the, so but I mean, we would be finding a, we would be looking for a report in January 15th of 2022. These numbers 22? are. Yeah, yeah okay. as, as, a, as an initial all report. Right. Uh, but of course, at that point, they may okay. not have been able to do all the work that is contemplated, but I think a report would be anticipated. Yes. And I, I think, I guess I dare say, I think the healthcare. I beg your pardon? Go ahead. I, I definitely believe we need a report on what their activities have been and yes. what they foresee for future activities. Okay. And and I think Well, I think I think I, I think you know you're you're right, you're absolutely right. And I think it calls for legislative recommendations, but uh, I think in um Maybe we miss making explicit what we should make explicit, which is a report on the activities and accomplishments to that point in time, as well as any legislative accomplishments or re recommendations. Yeah, I understand that. Okay, fine. Okay. And and, yeah. I, and I think I because this is such an important issue to the House Health Care Committee, I can assure you that our committee, at least in the next half of the biennium while I'm in leadership in the committee, we will be asking them to give us some kind of updates periodically uh, of the movement forward. But we would entertain any amendment you might make to make that explicit. I'm, I'm wondering if that's our jurisdiction. Um, I guess it is if we're saying, please give, we're paying for a report. Well, we'll I, I'm not feeling strongly about that and I'm not seeing others feel no. strongly about that. I'm hearing you say that is the intention and that you will do that. Um, I'm having my usual problem with the word of bi-monthly. Does that mean twice a month or every two months? I think it means every two months, but I think the, the real point is that it says, I think at least, and uh, and we we I think we put language in there that says the uh, the uh, commission shall be constrained by the appropriation given in terms of and out and the allocation of dollars. Yeah. Okay. Well, and so that is actually what I was wondering if the math works if they meet every at least every other every other month and there are at least that many people. And well, again, they're going to be, I'm sure there's going to be some sub work groups and I, at least the calculations that I've been party to should, they, mm -hmm. I think they should be able to work within that budget and that the director of racial equity uh, in the uh, RFP or contracting for additional ass assistance would be needing to balance the, the dollars available to accomplish the task within the $180,000 without us being more uh, prescriptive. Yeah, thank you. And did you kind of do a count of how many people 
are eligible for per diems. This is just the nitty gritty of what. Yes, I think you'll find you'll find there's an updated fiscal note that has been posted uh, from Nolan, and it, I think the estimate was 18. Okay. Okay. Um, committee, do you have any further questions of Chair Lippert? Um, I'm not seeing any, and shall we take a quick look at the fiscal note with Nolan since he is sitting here with us? Um, uh -huh. have, have you all opened it up, committee? <coughs> Hi, Nolan. Thanks for joining us. Um, I'm trying to find the document. I, I, I'm guessing it's pretty straightforward. And some it's on the committee website and you might need to refresh your browser. Yeah, thank you. I, I just hadn't opened it. Um, and I'm sorry to make folks wait while I look for something. Um, Today's date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you want me to send it to you as an attachment? You know, all I see, oh, well, no, there it is. Sorry, it's at got, the it. Bottom. Got, it. got it. Yeah, sometimes they move around. It's kind yeah. of odd. Yeah. So committee, do you have any questions about the um, fiscal note? All right, in a mellow mood. Um, it is pretty straightforward. And um, while we have Katie sitting with, so Nolan, I think we don't have any questions. Um, while we have Katie here with us, um, we do in section six under appropriations, um, if you look at it, we have the first number, um, and then this letter B, small b, it is in the intent to similar appropriation. So I think we may need to have some different language there. I'm not sure what that looks like, but let's figure it out. Uh, Jim? Yeah, thank you, um, Madam Chair. I wanted to go back to the fiscal note if no oh, one's okay. still here. Yes, he is. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just looking through this quickly and I just uh, hopefully you can shed some light on it. And section three, um, can you help us understand the 165,000, uh, some of it general fund, some of it special fund, where that special fund is sure. um, coming from? And then there's the 134,000 to the Department of Health. Can you just help us understand that? Sure. Um, for the record, Noel Nangwal, the Joint Fiscal Office. And uh, first thing I'll say is that that 200000 was already appropriated in H315. So it doesn't okay. actually appropriate it here. I just flag it because it was initially brought up as part of the negotiations and the committee put it in their in their prior in their um, recommendations and you approved right. it. I remember that. Okay. So I just flag it and then I say it's elsewhere. But what that, just to answer your question, the special fund, so it goes to the Green Mountain Care Board, and so that's bill back money. So that's money that is matched, or is that um, that the Green Mountain Care Board, when, as a regulator, they bill back. In other words, the regulated entities pay a portion of their, of their, um, of their costs. And they do this for a lot of things that they regulate, and this falls under that bill back authority. Um, and then for the health okay. department, it would just be general fund. All right, thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. So returning again to the appropriation section, um, is there, so I think we're in agreement that B cannot stay as is. And um, I, I think, or no, I suggested that we ask the group to um, propose a budget to us. And I guess we would have to ask them to propose that in time for consideration in the next, so by January 1st or 15th of 22, a budget for the following year, something like that. Uh, I, I'm, 
Thank you, Peter. I'm, I'm just trying to frame something to get uh, us moving. Yeah. And actually, I think that in order to meet the, the timeline for budget submissions, if we want it to come in under a normal budget That's concept, good. it actually needs, I don't know what the time frame is for the agency of administration, but it's probably November, December time frame. So that's when we would want it if we wanted it submitted to be part of the normal budget in lieu of a uh, in lieu of a, you know an add on. Add on, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we need to pick a date, but is that the general concept that we would be looking for to ask them to bring us a proposal, it, if they think they need to continue doing work in twenty three FY twenty three to bring us a proposal through the normal budgeting process. Is that the agreement here? That would be my recommendation that we do it, do it through the normal budgeting process. Okay. And Maria or Nolan, can you suggest a date for that? Um, I guess it depends on when the, um, when the administration puts out their budget instructions. Maria, do you recall? That's probably about the time when they when they start providing their responses to the initial budget restrictions is probably about the right time. Yeah, I think that's sometime in October. I can look on our website and see what the date is for the budget instructions. Um, I believe it's in the, it's in October, but um, let me just see. You know, we can always put October 15th for now. And so, I might recommend that if you're going to do that, you put it on, you put it under the, um, the powers and duties section. So if you go to like page 17, where it says subsection C, powers and duties, the advisory commission shall, and then maybe for number six, which would be on page 19, create a number six and shall provide to Department of Finance Management or whoever, I don't know who would go to. Uh, that's where I'd put that. Uh, that's where I might recommend putting that sentence. I don't know if Katie has any thoughts on that. Yeah, it seems to me where it should go rather than an appropriation section. Okay, I would um, be cautious about putting it there because it's a one-time report and you're putting it into oh. um, codified law. So I would I would instead suggest creating a standalone session law section just for that one report that you're expecting to receive. Okay. We'll leave the mechanics of making this work to Katie to figure out the smart way to deal with it. Um, let me just suggest that I'm a wee bit worried about picking a date like October 15th because that will be all of what, three and a half months since the group was formed and how do they know what they're doing? I, I'm concerned about that, but I'll leave it to you all. Um, I so. Peter, good idea. Not sure that it mechanically works, so it may have to be outside of it. I'm, I might go back to telling us what they think they need, um, you know, the first of the new year. That at least gives them a half a year. Uh, Jim? Yeah, um, I, I agree, uh, Madam Chair, that uh, you know, I would go with the January in fairness to the new commission and the, and the fact that it's being shared by the director, director of racial equity, uh, who hopefully would have an idea of what the ask might be going forward, uh, can certainly ask within the agency of administration to give it consideration in the uh, governor's recommend for uh, the following year. Um, I, I just want to quickly go back to the um, sunsetting provision, if we are saying we're funding it for one year and that uh, a report come back with terms of future, um, if we don't fund it, my assumption would be the commission goes away or does it stay, but there's no money allocated. I'm just, I'm asking on a hypothetical. I just wanted to know how we might uh, consider that going forward. Perhaps I, can, I don't yeah, know. Katie, yeah. Maybe that's for Katie or yeah. Nolan. I Katie. don't know. Sure. It's codified. The way it's drafted is it's codified. It would be in the green books as an ongoing existing committee. So if you choose to not fund it, it would the duties and responsibilities and the office itself would still be set up in law, but it wouldn't be funded. So could could they meet? Um, could they meet I, and get 
per diems if there's no money allocated? Well, if there's no, I, I, I don't know that I have a great answer for that. I mean, they're authorized to meet, they're authorized to get a per diem if there's no money there. I'm, I'm not sure how that would function, but it doesn't, the fact that there's not money there doesn't mean that they don't have the authority to meet anymore. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Thank you. I mean, I, I think maybe this is the conversation for next year in terms of, you know, what's the future? Um, should the commission be expanded, um, uh, done differently, different makeup, et cetera, uh, in conjunction with the funding? So I'm, I'm just asking how do we handle the sunset? So, and I, I think, though, too, that in terms of the budget piece, like, um, you know, if, you know, the first year it's envisioned to be, you know, sort of under the Office of Racial Equity. And in theory, if it's still going to be, if, it, if the following year is determined it's under the Office of Racial Equity, then the per diems would, in theory, may be built into their budget because that's where the money's going through. Or if okay. they're Office of Health Equity created, then it would be part of their budget, or if there's another, whatever. So I do think that, you know, and if they don't have any recommendations by the time that happens, I imagine the Office of Racial Equity will include it in her budget to the extent that she thinks that that, that will exist. So that's one way. Um, you know, some oftentimes with these per diems, when they're very, very small amounts, like under $3,000, it's they, just built into their budget, or I don't appropriate money for, I don't recommend appropriating money. So. Okay. This is a little okay. bit different, but that's the point. I think as right. thank you. As Jim suggested, this becomes a question for what we do next year. Um, uh -huh. By funding it for one year and asking for a proposal, we we create the opportunity to ask the questions that we're asking now at a more relevant time. So um, I'm just being mindful of the time and people's resources. I think um, we're in agreement that we do not, we, we think that section six small b needs to be struck, which is the reference to future biennials uh, or a funding or our intention rather for futures. Um, and that we are looking for Katie to give us some sort of language which says that they come back with a suggested budget um, by a date that makes sense in January of 23. Um, Katie, do you need more information from us to do what you need to do? No, my thought is that I will have language um, that says something like, as part of the annual January 15th report, um, the committee or the commission will report on its budgetary proposal for FY27 if, if funding is necessary. Um, but just tie it into a report so you don't have a report coming in January 1 and another one coming in January 15th. Okay, thank you. Um, that's, that sounds like a good solution. Does that, I, I made, I see your hand and I'll come to you in a second. Let's just finish this. Are people generally okay with what's being suggested there? I don't wanna rewrite or start, you know, say, no, that's not what we meant when Katie gives us something. Okay, so I'm hearing we're generally okay with that. Um, Maida? Uh, thanks. I just wanted to confirm that we are not contemplating including sunset language for this bill, correct? That is correct. The way we're going to leave it is um, if we will consider a budget next year, um, and Chair Lippert said they're going to be watching this, they're going yeah. to be having conversations, and I'm sure we will be having a conversation with his committee about if and what a budget should look like for this organization next year. When Thank you. Know more Thank and understand it better. Thank you. What, what made me a little nervous was that I had heard the word sunset a couple of more times after that initial yeah. back and forth, and to from my perspective, I was uh, highly ill at ease in thinking that health equity issues could be dealt with in a couple of years when it's taken lifetimes mm -hmm. for people in these situations. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, do we have any other um, 
questions and that will help us in understanding this bill and the appropriation. Um, Katie needs to scoot. We'll hear from you when you're able with this amendment. Um, Chair Lippert, thank you very much, Katie. Um, Chair Lippert, do you have a timing issue on this? Um, I'm just trying to think of when we need to uh, conclude our work on yeah. it. Yeah, I, I think uh, as a reporter of the bill, I'm comfortable in you moving it out uh, whenever you choose and it doesn't have to happen in, it doesn't have to happen swiftly. We, we had a conversation with another reporter of another bill about um, when they got their COVID shot and just wanting to make sure they were healthy and on their game. <laughs> so I'm now very aware of different yeah. things that can influence. But you, you, yeah. you've got it. And I, I, I have a second COVID shot scheduled midweek uh, next week. And I'm yeah. thinking, you know, I tried to get it moved to Friday, but they wouldn't. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your time. As you, uh, you see, we're gonna have a, an amendment and we'll let you know where it is. Uh, Dave is, the, is our liaison and yeah. we'll report this amendment on the floor. And if we have any questions, you, he'll be talking we'll, to you. We'll, yeah. well, Dave and I will stay in touch. Yeah, thank yeah. you. And Dave. I didn't wanna, I, I didn't wanna, uh, it may fall in Peter's bailiwick. I didn't want to offend Peter. Oh, Peter, is this oh. something you want to run with? Okay. <laughs> you. You yeah. And hey, go I, for it. Got it. If, if I may, because I, this is really beyond my area of knowledge, but uh, as to the issue of whether this money would be uh, money that came from one-time funds or other funds, uh, leave to your committee's further deliberation. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. We've got it on a list. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time no. and here and your work on this important bill. We very Thank much, you. I very much appreciate it. Thank you.